Hello everyone, we just a for you back from how to play. Today we're looking at how to play the game Forest Shuffle by Lookout Games in Green Line. And I guess designed by Koss. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Beautiful artwork. Pretty cool game for two to five players. Ages 10 and up. Takes about an hour. And what do you get in this game? Well, first of all, you get this nice board. That is the clearing. And you get the rules. You get a little score seat. Or a score pad. You get these cards here, which are the cave. Each player is going to have a cave. And we can put the rest aside. I will say about the cave, and it says here on the bottom what it does. It's going to give you one point per card you have in the cave. However, it doesn't explain in the rules precisely what to do with the cave. You have to look at the specific cards that relate to the cave, which are the, the bear and the raccoon, if I can find them. It may have almost come across them at some point. Um, <laughs> That's a beach. Not what I'm looking for. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful work, beautiful trees, uh, lots of animals. There's a bear. So the brown bear says you place all the cards from the clearing in your cave. That's all the cards that happen to be here go in your cave and you get one point for each of them. The raccoon is... You get to take one card, or you get to take as many cards from your hand and put them into your cave, and then you replace that amount of cards. So if I take five cards from my hand, put them in my cave, I then draw back up five cards. And you also get these free Winter is Coming cards, just like Game of Thrones. Winter is coming. <laughs> and you get these 14 reference cards that tell you all about the different trees and animals and how they score. That's cute. So I'm going to put all that aside for the moment. What you're going to do is you're going to split these cards up. And you're going to get all sorts of different trees. What you're going to be doing is playing trees into your forest. And then you're going to be playing animals. Uh, some of the animals like this are down the middle like that. <laughs> vertically. And you would put them on one side of your tree or the other. Others, like this, or horizontally down the middle here, are going to go on the top of your tree or the bottom. Uh, it's going to be basically different types of plants and reptiles and stuff for the bottom, birds and butterflies for the top, and different types of animals on either side. And you're going to keep doing this once you've played... Bunch of cards like this, your tree is complete, and you're going to get some points for that at the end of the game. Uh, but some, like this one here, the European hare, the rabbit, you can actually put multiple hares there. So I can have, if I can find some hares, like this one's not going to work because this is the opposite side. But if I had this one, I can put this here as well. So some lets you share spaces with multiple animals of the same kind. And it just gets you more and more points. And I'll explain a little bit about the cards in just a minute. So for a setup, it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna take the cards, you're gonna divide it into three decks. Uh, three piles, relatively equal. And yes, this back of the card actually does something too. I'll explain that. And so you get, for the cards, as I mentioned, 66 different trees, and there is five or six different species. You get 48 cards that are split across the top and bottom, 44 that are split left to right. The free winter cards, five caves, one per player, the game board, score pad, and the reference cards. <clears throat> and so what you're going to do for the setup is you can set up the clearing, everyone gets a cave. You can set these 14 reference cards up here next to the, the cave or to the board somewhere in case you need them. I can just put them up here. Um, you're gonna take these free winter cards, set them aside when there is not coming yet. <laughs> Stuff up the cards. You have to get a return a certain amount of cards to the game box, depending on the player count. For two players, you're going to return 30 cards. 
With three players, you're going to return 20. With four players, you're going to return 10 cards. And if you're using five players, you will use all the cards. So we'll just pretend we're using five players. <laughs> um, then what you're going to do is divide them again into these three piles. You're going to take two of these winter cards, mix them into this pile. And you place the other one on top. And then you place all of these on top of that. Put that here and you're ready to go. Each player is going to get six cards. You're going to draw them into your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. If none of these happens to be a tree, you can take a mullion and discard them and draw six more. But you can only do that once. And whoever last took a walk in the forest starts the game. It's been a while since I've done anything like that, but I will start. So what you're going to do on your turn is draw two cards. You can take two cards from here or from the clearing, if there happens to be any in the clearing. You will then play a card and check the clearing. If the clearing has 10 or more cards, you get to empty it. And those cards are out of the game. If there's less than 10 cards, you continue. That's basically what you do. So I can play this. Cards have different costs. Butterflies are all free. There's a zero. It's free. Um, this frog is also free. Some cards are one. This one is free. So I'm going to hold off on that. So what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to play a tree. And I'm going to pay that cost with, uh, let's say, this card. And that goes into the clearing. Whenever you plant a tree as well, you're going to take a card from here and add it to the clearing. And I forgot I was going to draw two cards. So let's go, let's rewind. So start off, I'm going to draw two cards. There's none in the clearing, so I have to take from here. Then I'm going to put my tree and pay the cost of, let's say, this one here and then we're also going to take one from here because as it says here every time you plant a tree you draw one and add it to the clearing and the next players is going to go and then it comes back to you and maybe now i want to put this butterfly here because it's free and actually i'm going to draw two cards first then i'm going to put that here <laughs> and you just keep going around the table doing this playing cards once you get to the winter is coming card, you will take it, put it aside. You will do that once you get to the second one. Once you get to the third winter is coming card, the game stops right then and there. Nobody takes any additional turns. You do not even complete your turn. You just stop and advance to go. <laughs> oh, wait, that's Monopoly. But basically the same idea. <laughs> uh, or stop and go directly to jail, actually, is what it is in Monopoly. But more or less the same idea. You just stop your turn immediately. And the game ends, and you will score. And you're going to have a bunch of trees, hopefully. And different things are going to score points in different ways. For instance, this horse chestnut, you get a certain amount of points for each one you have. This uh, linden gets you one point each, or three points if no other forest has more lindens in you. So if you're the only one that has lindens, you're going to get three points, or if you have more than anyone else. And... Different animals score different points and have different actions as well. For instance, let's see if I can find an, uh, something here. Like this one. The chaffins will score you five points if it's on a beech tree. The wood ant will score you two points per card below a tree. So if you have cards below a tree, for every one you have, you're going to get two points. If I have this one here, and I have some more. I don't have any more. <laughs> so I have this frog here. That's all that's going to do. And it tells you, there's a little symbol on here that tells you if it's an insect, a reptile, a bird, a butterfly, uh, different stuff. This one, you're going to get one point for every European hair you have. And you can have as many on this as you want, as I explained before. <clears throat> The bat gives you five points if you have at least three different types of bats. This fat dormouse gives you 15 points if it also 
if a bat also occupies the street. <laughs> Incidentally, it's on the same card. So if I have this here and I have a bat on the other side, 15 points. That's pretty good. There is a raccoon. I can take any number of cards from my hand and put it into my cave and draw an equal number of cards from the deck back into my hand. And there's that hair again. Different cards have different accents, and some have bonuses as well, I, I can explain. So, this bear, if I put this here, it has a cost of three. If I pay all, if I pay with all cards that are yellow, I get another turn. That's what this directional arrow means, it gives me another turn. And so if I were to, let's say, let, let's say I had that, and that, and I need another yellow card. <laughs> Yellow. There we go. If I wanted to play this bear, it costs three. If I just pay with three random cards, that's it. It goes there, and I also get to take whatever cards are in the clearing and put them into my cave. So you want to do this, ideally, when there's eight or nine cards in the clearing, because that's eight or nine points you can get, depending on how many you get. Um, but if I pay this in yellow, because it's yellow and it asks for yellow, if I pay that with three free cards, because it's a cost of three, I get another turn. I get this bonus action. And I'll put those there. And different cards have different bonus actions. Like this red fox. Every European hair, you're going to get two points. This red deer lets me play Another card that has an antlers, another animal that has antlers on it, if I pay the cost of two in this brownish color, orangey color. Uh, there's some cards. This one, I believe it's whenever I play a card that has a paw on it, I get to draw a card or play a an extra card. I would have to look that up, actually. I apologize. It's a... It's a draw. Um... I believe that's a draw. <laughs> Whatever it has a number like this, it's a draw card, basically. This one, if I pay in green, I get the draw card. Etc, etc. It's a pretty cool game. I do like it. It's nice, pretty good quality cards. The back, I mentioned as well, is something. It is a little tree sapling and at any point in time maybe you can't afford to pay for a tree and you just really want to get a tree down you can play this face down as a tree sapling and you can still play cards all around it it's just not going to score you any points for trees however there is one card that lets you score points for everything that has leaves on it so you would get a point for that at the very least and um anything else has to cover there's a sycamore. It's one point for every tree you have. Um, there's any more trees here. The beets. Five points if there's at least four beaches in your forest. There's one. The birch is just one point each, but it lets you draw a card. And that's just when you play it. The double sphere gives you another turn if you pay the cost in this light blue. And it's worth five points each. This one, the oak, it gives you another turn again if you pay the cost in that. And it gives you 10 points if you have all eight tree species in your forest. This one's kind of cool, the fire salamander. If you pay the cost in orange, you get to play any card that has a paw. It's basically like a free play. So like a bear, I can play that for free. That would be a good one to do if I played this here. And I paid the cost of one in orange. Then I could play uh, the bear for free. So you got to look out for opportunities like that as well. Yeah, it's a pretty cool little game. You're going to have multiple trees. I, I did something wrong here. <laughs> You're going to have multiple trees, with multiple different types of animals. You're going to have stuff perhaps in your cave. It's a real shame that they didn't put anything about the cave in the rules, at least to my understanding. I didn't see anything. I've heard other people say the same things. Like, why would you not do that? It's weird. Look at the cards to find out what it is, basically. Uh, overall, pretty cool game. And again, if you need more information on what everything does, 
You got all these cards that tell you what every animal, plant, tree does for scoring purposes. This one has a whole chapter on it. <laughs> so, yeah. It's a cool game. I like it. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, everything makes sense.